the Aperture Spotlight Mini Zoom. It's just an accessory, but what we're making an entire video around today. Because to me, it was a lot more interesting than the light that I purchased it with, the 60X. That's not to say that light isn't actually pretty interesting on its own. It is, I made a separate video about it somewhere else on the channel, or it'll be the one that comes out after this, because again, I'm more excited about this. I wanna talk more about this. It does so much. I've wanted to add a spotlight to my kit, but one that is much more affordable and compact relatively hasn't really been something that's popped up in my world. But now that I have it, let's talk about it. So besides standing in for heavy artillery, what does this thing actually do? If you clicked on the video, you definitely already know what the term spotlight would mean. It does that, it puts light in a spot, but this can do a lot more than that. I can control the angle of the beam, meaning how small or wide it is. I can control how soft or sharp the edges of that light are. And I can shape the light from a circle to a square or a diamond or, or whatever other shape you can make cutting four lines into a circle. Those are all the standard things you'd come to expect from a spotlight fixture, and it does those pretty well. All the physical controls are very easy and very intuitive. You move one piece back and forth to control the beam, twist the lens or move the barrel to change those various features, but that's all the standard stuff you'd come to expect from a spotlight. It has one particular feature that I'm really interested to try a lot more. The light comes with a bunch of gobos, is what they're calling it. I have a minor problem with calling them gobos. That definitely refers to a different piece of grip equipment, if I remember correctly. But these are inserts you can put in between the light and the spotlight mini zoom to create an effect onto the wall with the light. There's a lot of fun looks here, but one in particular I want to show you. They put an Aperture logo in the Aperture product so that you can project the Aperture logo onto the wall of your videos. If they can do that, you can definitely subscribe to the channel and like this video. Jokes aside, I thought they were gonna just put that in the video and not include it in the kits, but it is included to the kits. But it does make me think, you can get one 3D printed that will work in here, and you can get your own logo or your own whatever image you wanna have projected onto here. This one I'll probably never use again unless, hey Aperture, if you're hiring. One I will use again is this cloud one, which is great to blur into the background. It looks nice, blurry, and larger. Unlike this honeycomb one, which I have no idea what I will do with, it doesn't particularly seem useful to me, unless I were to get hired to make a Cheerios commercial where I need to throw some textural light onto a dramatic scene with the bee mascot, which I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope we can just use the window insert a little bit more. This one I think I'll use quite frequently. It looks cool for bland rooms and make them feel bigger than they are. This dot pattern, I'm not sure where I'll use besides projecting onto the side of a fish tank, this tree insert, I think, is pretty cool, though. If you want to simulate what it might look like for a tree outside your window, the sun shining in, this can help you cheat that. This, as well as the Windows ones, work a lot better bigger. And they work better a little blurred out. That's just the kind of effect you'd see in real life. I've also got a chain link fence insert here, as well as this dot pattern one I'm not sure I'll use too much. This line pattern is kind of cool. I'm not exactly sure I'll use it, but it could be adapted pretty quickly into a sci-fi scenario, I think. This lines one is one I think we will all use the most often and might be responsible for an increase in detective type lighting because this light got announced. This pattern, I'm not really sure where I would use it, but it's there, as well as this one. These things can be used well with some color to make boring backgrounds a little more interesting. The fire one, I will probably skip and stick to the built-in effects, just like this lightning one, which maybe combined together would be cool, but I think might be a little more uh, cheap horror than in my style. These seemingly random lines close out this group. And obviously you don't have to only project these gobos as Aperture is calling them onto empty walls. You can project them onto people like I am doing now and intend to do for most of the scenarios I see myself using them in. But if these windows aren't the right speed for your film, how about some blinds? Just by changing the gobo here, you get an entirely different look in a very bland and drab location. If you want to bring the outside indoors, well, well then that tree that's just always waving outside your window, you can now see inside your windowless apartment. 
There's only two downsides I found to the Spotlight Mini so far, and one of them is that the cost of it is more than that of the 60X light that it needs to be used with at $499. It just seems pretty expensive for something with no electronics in it, but it is well made and feels pretty sturdy. So I guess that's what I'm paying for. Overall, I'd be happy to see that price down $150. The other thing is that the case that is used to store this light is pretty large, but the light is pretty large. My complaint is not that the box to hold the large light is large. My complaint is that there's no combo bag that can put both the light and the Spotlight Mini Zoom into. I feel like a lot of people are going to use this combination together, and I'd love one larger bag versus two smaller bags but that just seems like an oversight and I understand why it doesn't necessarily come with it out of the gate, but it'd be great. There's like a pro combo that I got both things in one bag because I'm gonna bring them both every time I bring this light. My first impressions of the Spotlight Mini Zoom are that it's a little bigger than I was hoping it would be, but it does everything that I hoped it would. I do have an opportunity to use it this coming weekend on an actual shoot, not just projecting shapes onto my walls, but that's what I'll be doing on this shoot Anyway, if you'd like to see that, consider following me on Instagram or Twitter. That's all George M. Ivanoff. All platforms I'm just using to continue to drive traffic to this YouTube channel because I actually like to make YouTube videos and really appreciate you watching them. Until next time, I'm off walking.